When's Christmas? December 25th. When's 4th of July? July 4th. When's Easter? Uh, springtime? When's Ramadan? Uh, now. Well, yes, but how do you determine that? How come some events always change year to year? Why isn't it just as simple as December 25th? I have a feeling you're going to tell us. We're going to be talking about these different calendaring systems that were established long ago and how they are related to the moon's orbit around the Earth as well as the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Or, for flat earthers, that would be the Sun spinning around the North Pole at the center of the Earth. Nope, we're not going to be talking about that today. Today, we're talking about how these traditional calendaring systems relate to the current calendar that we use today as well as the implications it has on those who participate in these events. But enough talk, more data! It's data time! I am data. The calendar that most of us use today is the Gregorian calendar, issued by Pope Gregory XIII in the 16th century. It's a solar calendar, meaning that it's based on the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Or, if you're a flat earther, it's based on the rotation Stop. of the s- Fine. Because it's a solar calendar, the longest and shortest days of the year always happen on the same date each year. December 21st is the winter solstice because December 21st is always the shortest day of the year. The summer solstice, as well as the spring and autumnal equinoxes, are the same. Each of these days have the same date each year, since our calendar is synchronized to them. But many events don't use the solar calendar. They also incorporate the synodic month, or lunar cycle. These celebrations are tied to the moon, which is on a different cycle than the solar calendar. One solar year is about 365 days. That's one orbit of the Earth around the Sun. Conversely, one lunar cycle, or one full moon to the next, is about 29 and a half days. If we try to match these up, they don't fit. 12 lunar cycles is about 354 days, which is almost, but not quite, 365 days. This means that full moons land on different days each year. So if you have a full moon on January 1st this year, you won't have a full moon on January 1st next year. The Lunar New Year is probably the most obvious example of this, given its name. The Chinese calendar has 12 months, and the 11th month is defined as the month containing the winter solstice. So, the new year would start after the conclusion of the 12th lunar month. The winter solstice is December 21st. So usually, the lunar new year occurs on the second new moon after December 21st, which is sometime in January or February. Ugh, that's confusing. Well, it's only confusing to us because we're used to understanding years as solar-based and not lunar-based. Easter has a similar calculation. Easter is the first Sunday after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. The vernal equinox occurs in the spring on March 20th. So Easter is usually in March or April. So far, the calendars we've been talking about aren't actually lunar calendars, but lunisolar calendars. These calendars are based on both solar and lunar cycles, which is why they tend to occur roughly at the same time each year. Easter is always in the spring. Lunar New Year is always in the winter. But what about calendars that don't use the sun at all? What about pure lunar calendars. The Islamic Hijra calendar is just such an example. It's tied to lunar months and not the solar calendar at all. In the Hijra calendar, there are 12 months, each lasting 29 or 30 days. Remember that 12 lunar cycles is about 354 days, which is less than a solar year, which is about 365 days. This means that the beginning of the Islamic calendar starts about 10 days earlier each year, which means that the Hijra New Year occurs at different seasons over the years. This has some interesting practical implications. The ninth month of the Hijra calendar is Ramadan. During this month, Muslims practice fasting during the daytime when they are unable to eat or drink anything. This means that all food and drink must be consumed before sunrise or after sunset. This is rather significant, since some years the month of Ramadan occurs in the summertime when the days are longer, and other years it occurs in the wintertime when the days are shorter. In 2016, Ramadan occurred June 6th through July 5th. In 2031, Ramadan will occur December 14th through January 12th of 2032. This means that Muslims in the Northern Hemisphere won't fast as long in 2031 as they did in 2016. But it's more complicated than that. 
Summer affects different parts of the world differently. If you live near the equator, daylight doesn't change that much between summer and winter. But if you live near the North Pole, summer days and winter days are drastically different in length. If we look at Mecca, Saudi Arabia, we see that it's only 21 degrees north of the equator. That means that during the summer Ramadan of 2016, Muslims there needed to fast for about 13 and a half hours. It also means that during winter Ramadan of 2031, Muslims there will need to fast for about 11 hours. So there really isn't that much of a difference in how long one needs to fast between summer and winter. However, if we travel to the Muslim community of Akaluit Nunavut in the Canadian Arctic, we find a very different story. Akaluit is 64 degrees north of the equator, which is very different from Mecca. During the summer Ramadan of 2016, there were about 20 hours of sunlight. This means that Muslims there needed to fast from 2 a.m. to 11 p.m. Conversely, during the winter months of Ramadan in 2031, Muslims there will only need to fast for about four hours. So how do Arctic Muslims handle 20 hours of fasting? Well, many Muslim scholars advise these northern communities to use the daylight schedules of more southern Muslim cities like Ottawa or even Mecca. That way, people only need to fast for a shorter portion of the day. Hopefully, we shed some light on the intriguing ways people have developed for measuring time based on the orbits of the Earth and the Moon. Or, if you believe the Earth is flat... No!